Okay, I'm going to talk about uh, a philosopher uh, by the name of Paul Ricoeur, um, who was uh, one of the great uh, philosophers of the 20th century. He was French. Um, he lived, he was born in 1917 and died in, in 2005. He uh, was a prolific writer, uh, a, a brilliant, a very brilliant mind. Um, I don't, I don't think he's that well known today among by most people in the public. I mean, but, but he is very well known by among philosoph philosophers. He was one of the great philosophers of the 20th century, and I think his uh, influence is going to continue. Um, he, I think he's going to be considered uh, uh, an important philosopher for a long time. He, he. Uh, started out being influenced by people like uh, Heidegger, uh, Husserl. Um, so he's in the, in, the, in the tradition of phenomenology and also uh, hermeneutics, which is a study of interpretation. He uh, wrote a classic study of uh, Freud uh, dealing with um, uh, uh, offering a... a uh, a criticism, or a actually offering a, an interpretation of Freud, um, I I trying to integrate Fre Freudian psychoanalysis into his own reflective philosophy. Ricoeur um, is mainly, um, uh, I think, what, what I'm going to focus on is his importance for hermeneutics, which is the interpretation of texts. Um, so, what I want to do is to, I'm going to focus on one essay, um, because if there's no point in really just talking generally about Ricoeur's thought, because it's so, it encompasses so many things, I think it's better to focus on one of his essays, so we can get into some detail of his, of his thought. Um, let me say something about uh, let me let me if I if if you've never read Ricoeur, let me offer a few suggestions where I I think what I would start. If I was going to start reading Ricoeur, if you've never read Ricoeur, I would suggest that you begin with a volume that he wrote in 1965 called The Conflict of Interpretations. The Conflict of Interpretations. It's a gives you a very good introduction to Ricoeur's thought, uh, to his engagement with structuralism, with Freudian psychoanalysis. Ricoeur is a philosopher who philosophizes always in in dialogue with other, other thinkers. I think that's what sets him apart from any other philosopher I've ever read. Ricoeur engages. He never just philosophizes in solitude, in, in developing his own ideas. He always develops his own ideas in confrontation with others who disagree with him. Um, so he's he philosophizes within a tradition, and he is very very unique in that sense. So when you read Ricoeur, you don't just read you're not just reading what Ricoeur has thought. You're always reading about other people, other philosophers. And so that's that's a, a major characteristic of a recur. Recurs um, the things that influences philosophy are. Let me just point a few things out where that are influences on his thought. He's deeply influenced by the Christian tradition. Um, so the Bible, Christian theology, um, primarily it's the Reformed tradition. He, Ricoeur is French. So he's deeply influenced by the Christian tradition. He's deeply influenced by the history of, history of philosophy. 
uh, Plato, Aristotle. And when it comes to modern philosophies, deeply uh, influenced by Heidegger, Heidegger's phenomenolo uh, her phenomenology and hermeneutics. He's influenced by Husserl. Uh, Gabriel Marcel was a big influence on Ricoeur. And in his later period of his career, he became very, in, very uh, interested in linguistics and textual interpretation. Um, so, Ricoeur is a thinker that when you read Ricoeur, you're encountering the philosophical tradition in a way that I don't think, uh, I, I've never read any philosopher that, that is so open to, it's not that Ricoeur is like, just accepts what other people say. He's, he's open to what they say and he uses them. He, he engages with thought, with uh, philosophies that are at variance with what he himself believes. He's open to, you might say, the other. Um, so, um, I want to say something about, I'm going to just make a few comments about this essay I want to talk about, and it's called The Task of Hermeneutics. It comes from a volume called Hermeneutics and the Human Sciences. That's what the book looks like, Hermeneutics and the Human Sciences. It's a collection of essays of his, and I'm going to deal with the first uh, essay. I want to go over, I want to deal with the entire essay, but I just want to use uh, this uh, video to introduce the essay, and then I'll talk it, about it in more detail in upcoming videos. So this essay is called The Task of Hermeneutics. Let me read the first uh, paragraph, the first couple of paragraphs. The first paragraph begins this way. This essay seeks to describe the state of the hermeneutical problem. Okay, this is 1965. He's, this book was published. So, this essay seeks to describe the state of the hermeneutical problem, such as I receive and perceive it, before offering my own contribution to the debate. So, this essay is going to give you a good introduction to what hermeneutics is all about. Um, I think a lot of people have heard about hermeneutics, but they really don't, you know, know the details of it. So in this essay, Ricoeur is going to get into the details. This essay seeks to describe the state of the hermeneutical problem, such as I perceive it, receive and perceive it before offering my own contribution to the debate. In this preliminary discussion, I shall restrict myself to identifying not only the elements of a conviction, but the terms of an unresolved problem. This is very characteristic of Ricoeur. He always, his thought always leads to some unresolved problem that he has to deal with in future works. He says, for I wish to lead hermeneutical reflection to the point where it calls by an internal aporia for an important reorientation which will enable it to enter seriously into discussion with the sciences of the text from semiology to exegesis. Okay, I wish to lead hermeneutical reflection to the point where it calls by an internal aporia, which is basically uh, a problem that is unresolved, an aporia, for an important reorientation which will enable it to enter seriously into discussion with the sciences of the text and specifically he's talking about semiology and exegesis to exegesis and then he gives you a definition of hermeneutics so this is very important i shall adopt the following work working definition of hermeneutics hermeneutics is the theory of the operations of understanding in their relation to the interpretation of texts. Let me read it one more time. Hermeneutics 
is the theory of the operations of the understanding in their relation to the interpretation of texts. So hermeneutics deals with textual interpretation, the theory of the operations of understanding in their relation to the interpretation of texts. So the key idea will be the realization so the uh, key idea will be the realization of discourse as a text and the elaboration of the categories of the text will be the concern of subsequent study. So in, not in this, he's not going to deal with that in this essay but in other, other essays he gets into the elaboration of the categories of the text. The way will thereby be prepared for an attempt to resolve the central problem of hermeneutics, and here's what the central problem is, presented at the end of this essay. So here's what Ricoeur thinks is the central problem of hermeneutics, which he will exp w get at at the end of this essay, so we'll lead up to it. So what is the central problem of hermeneutics? Namely, the opposition. This idea of conflict is at the center of Ricoeur's thought. The opposition, disastrous in my view, between explanation and understanding. So that radical dichotomy between explanation and understanding, Ricoeur thinks is disastrous. So he's going to try to explain how the two can be brought into um, some kind of relationship. Um, disastrous, in my view, between, between explanation and understanding. The search for a complementarity between these two attitudes, which romantic hermeneutics tends to dissociate, will thus express on the epistemological plane the hermeneutical reorientation demanded by the notion of the text. So that's where this essay is, go is, going, this is going to focus on. He's going to explain the disastrous, what he calls, opposition between explanation and understanding. And then the search for a complementarity between these two attitudes which romantic hermeneutics tends to dissociate, so Ricoeur is distancing himself from the romantic hermeneutics, will thus express on the epistemological plane the hermeneutical reorientation demanded by the notion of the text. Okay, so that's just an introduction, and then in the pre next a few um, videos, I'm going to, I'm gonna go through the entire first, this essay. Uh, the first essay in the book, Hermeneutics and the Human Sciences, The Task of Hermeneutics. So I want to go through this entire essay and explain what recur, how, what Recur's argument is. It's a, uh, let's see, it's about 20 pages. It's a 20 page essay. So I, I'm going to, I'll try to, you know, go over it so it'll be his thought will be clear. And I'll just focus on the main uh, development, the way they are, the essay develops. So by the end of we, by, by the time we get through the essay, you'll have a good understanding of Recur's, uh, her, uh, Recur's hermeneutics. Okay? So that's, this is just part one of a series. Okay? So I will be back in a day or so with some other videos.